It's Thursday, and one of the many wonderful things about living in Montreal, especially on a Thursday, is that we start getting into sank a set mode. It's going to be a big weekend of boozing. I mean, who are we kidding? It's St. Patty's Day tomorrow, the parade on Sunday. So what do you think? A green beer? Shot of Jameson? Nah, we can do way better than that. We've got some St. Patty's-inspired cocktails to get us in the spirit, or the spirits. Not that we really need any help, but... <laughs> <laughs> Chris Zekand is a cocktail consultant writing a series for Cult Montreal about cocktails in the city. Hi, Chris. Howdy. How are you doing? Or should I call you Zeke? Uh, call me whatever you want. Just don't call me late for dinner. I think I've called you a few things over the years. Yes. I haven't seen you in years and years, but I know you from the main. I mean, we both yeah. lived on the main, and boy, I think we spent a lot of time in bars. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you are definitely a professional in this department, I would I, have to I, say. I try my best. <laughs> so do you think that a green beer is just a pedestrian thing you can't... You, uh, it's not even pedestrian it's an abomination oh in a bar what about the shot of jameson a shot of jameson is acceptable however uh, shots always they tend to be for uh, people who don't know or don't quite understand the entire cocktail culture and they just really want to get uh, as drunk as possible as quickly as possible <laughs> okay fair enough uh, sipping stuff is much better it is much better because yes. then you actually get the flavor yes and that I mean, you get the burn from the shot, but it's like that burn that hurts for a moment and then it's gone, as opposed mm -hmm. to savoring something. Yes, and then if you are uh, drinking cocktails or any any sort of liquor where you're taking your time, over time it will um, change. It will become, the, the uh, oxidation will have an effect. Your experience becomes entirely different if you're drinking with your sweetie, if you're drinking after a real <laughs> rough day at work. Yeah. Two different, completely different things. That makes total sense. So let's, cocktail culture, I feel like has always been alive and well in Montreal, but there's a resurgence of sorts and it's going on at different levels. Yes, it's it's sort of thing where as I'm telling uh, my friends, it's uh, cocktails are the new beer. It's not let's go out for a beer after work, let's go out for cocktails. And uh, you can take just about any bar you want, uh, even uh, which one, one of my locals, which is Local 75 on Monkland, they are now officially a cocktail bar as opposed to just slinging beers. Slinging beers. Uh -huh. And then there is, uh, uh, which one, then? awesome thing where uh, there are these speakeasy type of bars. What which, is this? What is a speakeasy? Uh, speakeasy, well, speakeasy was what you were uh, using during Prohibition in the United States. And then with the resurgence of cocktail culture, now people have been making these sort of hidden bars. And so you have something like uh, the Atwater Cocktail Club, ah. which you have to walk into an alley, which looks like it's a little bit sketchy. And then you got to knock properly on the door and then they will let you in, but there's no signage I whatsoever. I love that. You have something like the cold room which is down in old Montreal where there's no sign on the door whatsoever you push the button and then somebody comes up to greet you these are the sort of thing there's another one uh, the cloak room which is in a men's clothing store on mountain and, and uh, how do you find out about these things? Is it all word of mouth? Uh, pretty much, yes. Talk yeah. to me. Talk to me. I, I have a, I have a list. Okay, well, that's what I'm doing. I'm talking to <laughs> yes. you now. So let's talk about what what will you be drinking for St. Patty's Day this weekend? Uh, there, I tend to leave St. Patty's Day to the amateurs. Ah. <laughs> and there, it's uh, I have a which one? I have some barrels at home, and so I've been taking advantage of making barrel aged Negronis. And Negronis, which I have here with you and for Barrel you. Barrel age Negroni. Yeah, and basically... Uh, I'm, I can get drunk just off a, a whiff of that. I'm just smelling it. I'm like, woo, that is potent. Uh, it's basically uh, equal amounts of Campari, uh, red vermouth, and gin. And then I stuck it into a barrel, and so then it's with, with the wood, it has a, a very, very interesting effect that is because everything else in it is unaged. This then ages it and sort of uh, has a, uh, bio, a chemical reaction that makes it absolutely spectacular and wonderful. Let's taste. Mm -hmm. Cheers. I'm coming Can't over, you? Natasha. I knew it. I was like, here comes Jay. <laughs> we, we have one for Come you. Come on over, Jay. By the way, Jay was a bartender for years. And when people would ask him to make a fancy drink, like say they would ask for, I don't know, a mojito, he'd say, you want a beer, right? Yeah. And, they, and they'd say, no, no, I ordered a mojito. And he'd be like, yes, here's your beer. <laughs> Cheers, Jay. I, I'm waiting. I, I was a lazy bartender. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. Cheers. Yeah. Gin, gin. Okay. Ooh. But yes, they are they are delicious. And hey, that is way more smooth than I expected. Mm -hmm. The nose off the top of that was like, you know, could kind of somewhat char your nose hairs. But the taste is smooth and delightful. Yes. That's the oak. Yeah, that's being the uh, aged in the barrel. What do you think of that, Jay? Uh, very nice. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Now, is this um, 
legal? Is it like a moonshine kind of? Uh, <laughs> the, 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 it, yeah, yes, it is legal. You, you, you can do anything you want with alcohol in your home. Once it's... Which is, where I'm, which is where I'm doing it. It is not something that you, you can get served at a bar. You can't pay for this. You can't no. buy... We have to be bestowed the gift of yes. this. I lo- Okay, so yeah. tell me what it is at Campari. Campari, red vermouth, and gin in equal proportions. And I uh, then just toss it into a barrel, wait about a month, and you're good to go. Smooth. <laughs> That is really Good smooth. Stuff. Okay, and you know a little bit about the history of some of the famous cocktails. Yes, for... in terms of is, is if we're sticking to a sort of St. Patrick's Day theme, yeah. it's uh, the Irish coffee, which is uh, what a lot of people are going to be drinking, especially at the Irish breakfasts and so on. And did you ever try and figure out where and when the Irish coffee was invented? No, of course I didn't. I just drink it. <laughs> okay. No, it was invented in 1943 by a guy named Joe Sheridan, who was working at uh, this basically before you had real serious planes that could uh, travel across the Atlantic, you had these sea boats. And so it was, uh, which month in Foynes, which was in County Limerick. And he was in a mm. seaplane sort of airport or sea, seaport. Yeah. And uh, there were a bunch of uh, American travelers who uh, got stranded there. And so he doused uh, which month, uh, his coffee with a bunch of whiskey to make them happy and dumped some uh, whipped cream on it. Like how Irish is this? Basically, you're hiding the booze, just get the booze in there, and you're heating it up at yes. the same time. This is this is a match made in heaven. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the and, whipped cream I could do yeah. without, though. Uh, it's, it's a nice touch, especially if it's homemade whipped cream. And what about homemade Baileys? People can make their own Baileys. Oh, yeah. It's very easy. It's cream, sweetened condensed milk, a lot of whiskey, and then a little bit of instant coffee, chocolate syrup, vanilla ex- extract, and almond, almond, almond extract. Sorry about that. Almond ax- extract. That's hard to say. Yes, exactly. <laughs> almond, I can't even say it. I was going to try an almond extract. Yes. That's very hard to say, but it's not so hard to make then. No, it sounds not like a, the whole... not at all. It's basically you're just making which one, the cream and uh, which one, the evaporated milk uh, with a little bit of booze. Oof, this sounds good. Good. Okay, so your last, uh, the last article that I read for Cult Mont- Montreal was about gin. Yes. And you're writing a series. What's the next yeah. one going to be? Uh, there it's um, sort of, uh, betwixt and between. It's I want to not only talk about the alcohol that is made here in Quebec, but also about the various bars and uh, what they and what they offer in terms of where you have uh, your standard issue restaurant reviews. There should be standard issue bar reviews as well, especially since cocktail making and mixology is something that is on par with uh, making any uh, fancy fancy food dishes. One of the things that I read that I, I really liked was that we have the ability now to make 100% Quebec. Quebecois cocktail. Yes. That means all ingredients. All ingredients are made, made in here. Quebec. And there they're, they're are what, uh, about, I think now a dozen Quebecois gins. Don't quote me on that. They're probably more like eight. And then there are uh, two vermouths. And uh, what's called gin and vermouth is uh, how you make a basic martini. You have your rouge gorge and you also have the vermouth that's made by the, uh, Le Lab. And uh, that's uh, basically a, uh, the sort of crux or the the sort of keystone for uh, how to make cocktails. You know what I say to that? Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> it's yeah, a pleasure. Jay's, Jay's back in on it again. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much for your time, Chris. It's just a pleasure to have you in studio. It's my pleasure. Thank you very I'm, much. I'm going to take another sip of this yeah. right now. Chris Zekand is a cocktail consultant writing a series for Cult Montreal about cocktails right here in Montreal.